Hi everybody, Big Guy here. Welcome to Mike's Garage. Been getting a lot of questions about the Filter Queen vacuum. I've done a couple of videos on how to do certain things to it. I have a, uh, what they call a 95X. It's an older model from the 1990s. Uh, it has a foot pedal switch. It has a high-low switch on the side. Has a bad motor. Uh, we're going to take it apart, show you some tips, uh, what to do to how to take it apart, put it back together without a lot of confusion. So let's go over to the workbench. Okay, what we're going to do is this, uh, I believe, a 95X. We're going to take the tool caddy off. We're going to change the motor in this. You have to take the foot pedal pad off because we have to slide that through the housing. Take off the cap on the top. Now, there are three screws in there that hold this together. I've already taken the screws out to save time, keep things moving along. Take out that retainer that's in there. That'll come right out once you remove the screws. Now, just grab the handle on the top, and it should open up. You can't pull it straight up because it has all the wires there. Now, you can see the wires, uh, the filter there. Look how dirty that filter is. It's black from all the carbon. And also, the uh, scent pad is all black. If you don't change those and change this filter here, it will still smell like a burnt motor after you put the new motor in. It all has to be wiped out. Look at all the dirt and everything, all the residue that that motor discharged when it burns up. This is a four-wire motor. It's called an 1100. What I do to save time and confusion is I just cut the wires off. Uh, we're not going to use the motor anymore. The motor's no good. So there's wire nuts. It saves you time from picking through to see what wire goes where. So just cut the wires off uh, right near the housing. Now, there's three screws that hold the upper part of the motor support to the lower part. So we have to take out those three screws. Now, some of them have a nut on the bottom. Now, if you can see, I'm trying to get a better picture of it here. But there's a nut on the other end of that screw. And there it is there. Okay. Uh, we're going to undo the screw, take the nut off, and then you should be able to lift it out. And the wires have me hung up here. Let's see if we can't get those wires through the housing. They're the wires we cut off. They're all in a knot there. So we're gonna push those through. There you go. Now, this is the old motor. It's all burned up. Um, the green things are the brushes. Um, they have to be lined up in the housing. You can see how it hot it got. Look at that, it's melted. The plastic actually melted on the top of the motor. The bearing got so hot. Now, the, the green things are the brushes for the motor and you can see where it meets the armature. It's burnt black. There's also an arrow in the housing. Now the brushes have to line up with that arrow to go in there properly. So pay attention when you take it apart because it goes back together only one way. So um, we're gonna have to uh, make sure the wires go out on the left and the arrows in the back. Here's the new motor. It has all, all twist on wire nut connections and that is the heat sensor. Uh, the heat sensor shuts the motor off automatically when it overheats so you don't burn up the bearings. When the bearings are that old, this is probably 25 years old, this machine. All right, now we're going to lift the motor out. Now it has a rubber gasket on the bottom and the top. That seals it so it has good suction and it helps stop the vibrations so it runs smooth because it is a very high RPM motor. It's actually close to a 15 amp motor. And we're going to clean all this up with 409 or any kind of good strong surface cleaner. You can see all the dust and dirt and everything that's built up in there. Regular old paper towel. Soak it with some 409. And we are going to wipe everything down uh, before we even try to put things back together. Okay, so we wiped some things down. We wiped the gaskets down. We put the gaskets on the new motor. We took the motor guard off the bottom. That's where that goes. So look how filthy that was. That hasn't been changed in a while. Whoever had this machine didn't take good care of it. We wiped that out. Now we're going to go in here. We're going to take this filter out. Uh, that'll be next. And we have to wipe out everything there because if you don't change that, like I say, when you run it, it's going to smell like a burning uh, electric motor. Look how black that is. That filter is supposed to be white. So let's get that out of there. That's going to go right in the trash. 
person who's going to start wiping everything down. And if you have to ever, ever have to change the handle on the top, or you have to replace the grill, there's the four screws in there right there. That's how that comes apart. And it takes the grill right off of the top. The one, two, and three, four. There's two on this side. That takes the handle off and you get it off the top. Right there. You can polish it up real good when you have it apart. I don't recommend you put it back together unless you shine it up. Okay, so we're going to get in here. We're going to wipe everything down. Take the screws out. Take the, uh, the handle off of the top. The handle came off. Now the grill is loose. We're going to lift the grill up. We're going to clean underneath of it because uh, you really don't you really don't have a chance to do that uh, on a day to day basis. So it does get a lot of built up grime under there. We polished that up with some good 409. Uh, we put it on there, let it soak, then wiped it down. Uh, shined up the grill part before we put it back on there. Now we're getting ready to remount the handle. We line up the holes. Now what I do is I just put one screw in each side and then I put the second screw in each side and I go ahead with a very light screwdriver and a drill. Tighten it up. I have it on the lowest setting so it won't snap the screw off or strip the plastic because it is all uh, a metal screw going into a plastic. So we wanted to do that. We're going to wipe down the cardboard retainer. See the filter? This is the filter that goes in there and it and it's pure white and it captures everything. And look at that. How much dirt and everything it caught when that motor burned up. So you do have to change that. You put a new pad in, change that pad. That goes on the cap. Okay, we got the white filter in. We got the retainer in. Now here's the good part. Here's where you. Here's why you cut the wires off. Because now we're going to put the motor back into the housing. I'm going to wipe that in here too, because in there everything has to be wiped out. I'm going to put a new motor guard on the bottom. There's the old one, and the new one's in my hand also. You can see how nice that is. When you put it in, all those odors and filth have to come out of that machine to make it right. So it does take some time. It takes a couple hours to do this. Uh, the video really doesn't show you all the time. I am, um, I am cutting and editing things here, so you can see what to do, but it doesn't drag it out. So you put that in, press it in, you put the snap ring on it, snap that back in place. Now we're going to set the motor in. Again, we're going to pay attention. Now this motor has black... Um, the, the uh, brushes are black. They're not in a green housing. They're black. So we are going to look for that arrow. Going to make sure that arrow is lined up. And the brushes are in alignment with the arrow. And the wires go off to the left side. The arrow is going to be on the top. And the, the wires go out to the left. And that's how we're going to put it together. Now, you, you have to work at fishing those wires through the hole. And make sure they don't wrap over the top of the motor. They have to go around the motor. We're going to put those screws back in with the nuts on the bottom. Tighten that all down. Uh, just snug. Doesn't have to. Don't try to make it as tight as you can. Make sure there's no wires going across the top of the bearing. Now here we go. We got four wires sticking out, and we got four cut wires on the other side. So it's pretty, uh, pretty elementary. Uh, blue wire, we're going to look for the cut off blue wire. Here's a yellow wire that's cut off. So we're just going to hook up one wire and replace it. Undo the wire nut, put the same color wire in, put the wire it all up, and top. we're done. So there's four wire nuts you undo, you pull off the broken wire, put the new wire on it, do them one at a time. Don't take all the wire nuts off. It just makes a mess, and you have, have to try to figure it out. Now, when you put the housing on, you have to fish the housing so the foot pedal switch comes through. Make sure you got a nice gap on either side of that foot pedal. Um, let me go back. I want to show you that again. That's all back together. Uh, those three holes for the screws are not an actual triangle. They're a little offset. So you have to play with that um, the bracket to get it lined up. You put the three screws back in. That's all secured. We're going to change the uh, the uh, scent pad in the cap to get that stink out of there also. 
and we're all set to go. Um, let's take that apart and we're going to put the new one in. That just turns to the left and it unlocks. Uh, try to do it with one hand here while I'm holding the camera. Uh, get it out. Look how filthy that is. Put the new one in. Just drop it in there. I wiped out the cap. Wiped off the, uh, the, the retainer. Put it on. Give it a quarter of a turn. Lock it in. There you go. I did it with one hand. How do you like that? Now again, make sure that that foot pedal switch works and it's not binding. Let's get the cap on. You have to move that handle up a little bit. I forgot. You got to move the handle up and then slide that underneath and that'll lock in place. Okay, let's double check that that'll, that the switch will work. It doesn't bind. If you have it a little too far to the left, a little too far to the right, it'll bind. Um, the uh, rubber cap has two little knobs that have to line up with the two holes. You can see the right amount of gap on the left and right side of the housing. Okay, it looks like we're all set with that. We got it all shined up. We got it all wiped out. We got all new filters in it. We got a brand new motor in it. Nothing left to do but plug it in. Let's get it plugged in. It's hard to do when you're trying to do it through the camera lens. And um, we're going to turn it on. The foot pedal switch just turns it on and off. So uh, we're going to hit the foot pedal switch. Make sure it turns on. We're going to do that. If you have any questions, we do have a wiring diagram. We have a couple different ones here. Uh, according to which motor you have, we have three wire motors, four wire motors. The real old ones have a two wire motor. It's only one speed. They all pull close to 10 amps. Um, very powerful motor. 90 pounds of suction is what you should be getting at the end of the hose. Uh, so it, it's a very good machine. I uh, hope that was helpful, and if you have any questions, give us a call, and um, see you next time. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, try to put more videos up. Give me some comments and tell me what you'd like to see. I'll try to talk you through it. Uh, you can always call us at the 800 number, and uh, we'll be able to give you some information. I do have those wiring schematics available. I can email them to you if that's what you want to help you out. Uh, we have all the parts and everything here at the shop, uh, so you can give us a call and we'll help you out with it, okay? Thanks for watching Mike's Garage. We'll see you next time. Be safe. Hey, everybody. Almost forgot. Hit that subscribe button. We need more subscribers and ring the bell so you get notified next time we put a video up. Thanks for watching Mike's Garage. We'll see you next time. Be safe. Going to have our clothing line coming out soon. Pay attention for more details. Thanks.